people have to remember that marketing is not a set it, forget it kind of thing. It's not something you do passively once and that you're done. You really need to find the right recipe. You need to find the right methods, find out what works for you as a business. A lot of times that is how folks find other contractors, how homeowners find contractors. It's through those recommendations. It's through reading those reviews and finding out who can really help you out. Today, we're going to talk about the biggest mistakes that lawn care business owners make when marketing or not marketing their lawn care business. And our expert today is Chris from Orlando, Florida, from Footbridge Media. Welcome back to the program, Chris. Hey, thank you so much for having me, Paul. Yeah, well, let's let's dive right into it, man. What, what are the biggest mistakes that you see uh, happening with marketing a home service business, specifically a lawn care landscaping business? One of the things that I see, the earliest problems that a lot of folks come, who come on, they're just starting up their business, they're getting their equipment ready, they're doing a couple lawns now. The biggest mistake I see is people wait to start their marketing. They think that it's a back burner thing. They think, well, I'm going to get some work in first, going to get some customers behind me. But really, it's better to start as soon as possible, even before you mow your first lawn, if you can. You know, a lot of people think about uh, making money in retirement. That's something people talk about a lot. You got to put away money early. And people say that because over the years, you have compounding interest. That's the thing where you put in a little bit of effort at the beginning. And over time, it grows and grows and grows. And you get a lot of value of that little bit of effort you put in the beginning. Marketing absolutely can work in the same way. If you put in that early marketing work, that hard work, you lay the foundation for strong digital marketing, for print marketing, having a good logo, having good signage on your vehicles, all of that early on pays off. On the web, uh, organic optimization and local optimization, they take time to catch up to your competitors. If you put in an effort early, as early as you can, that will grow over time and you get that compounding interest, that compounding effect where you can really get a lot more bang for your buck from your website the longer that it's been up and the longer you've had a successful base for search engine optimization and for growing your business. That's really good. When we were talking off air, you said you 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 basically pinpointed the four, you know, biggest uh, mistakes and and things of that. So why don't we start getting into the details of specifically what to avoid? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you're avoiding that marketing, the the, the four points there is you don't want to not wait for your marketing. You want to you want to make sure you're thinking of marketing as an active thing. Marketing is not a set it and forget it setup. You also have to realize that reviews don't just happen. A lot of folks sit back and, and relax, but reviews are a, con a, a concentrated effort, something you've got to do on purpose to make things happen. And the last thing is you have to make sure you have more than just a single page website. A lot of folks think that that's just enough. Uh, you can't have just that one little presence. You really have to expand your presence on the web to capture the traffic that you need. So we're talking about making those mistakes of, of missing the opportunity for marketing. When you're putting effort into a business, you're putting in marketing effort, you're putting in uh, effort into customer service, you're putting marketing effort into advertising, you're always spending time or money. And usually a combination of the two. When you're putting more time in earlier, that's when you really get the most bang for your buck, the most benefit for your business. And it's hard. I absolutely get it. Contractors and lawn care folks are very busy with their day-to-day -day operations. It's hard to focus on today and tomorrow at the same time. That's one of the biggest mistakes is not putting forth that effort to realize that if you're just mowing lawns, then you're just kind of giving yourself a job. If you're out there and you're finding more ways to expand your business, to get more people to help you out, to get more resources to make work easier for you and life easier for you, that's when you start to run a business. And that's really the difference between having a lawn care job and running a successful lawn care business from a marketing and operations standpoint. That's so good, Chris. I want to uh, dive a little bit deeper on this one page website. Uh, what is the proper way that a lawn care business uh, website can, you know, simply share with the world? Here's, you know, who we serve, how we serve you, how you can get connected with us. Like, what's the best practices? And if somebody says, you know what, Paul, I want to build my website right. I, I want to have it fully optimized, doing it the right way. Uh, we know it's not the one page, you know, little simple website, but what what's the proper um, best practices uh, for that website to be fully optimized uh, to reach your potential as a lawn care business? Sure. You know, beyond that homepage, that one single page, there's lots of small pages that kind of aggregate and build up to a really successful online uh, presence. So from a people standpoint, for what people want to see, you want to make sure you've got a strong about us page, something that tells your story. 
kind of kind of explains who you are. It proves that you are a human being in the area, and not just some faceless business. But also, it gives people perspective into why they should choose you. Your website should also have easy contact methods. Uh, if you don't have good call to action on your website, on any single page, on the home page or any of the pages that you build, it's going to make it harder for people to reach out to you and get a hold of you. Your goal on your website is to present people with information and to make it as easy as possible for them to contact you. So as far as that information goes, you want to make sure you have a page on your website dedicated to every single major service that you offer. So if you do recurring lawn care services, if you do fertilization services, if you do pest control services, if you offer tree trimming and tree removal and stump removal, ideally you'd have individual pages for every one of those major services. So I'd call it a major service if someone called you and said, will you come out here for, for service X? And you would, you'd come out there just for that one part, then absolutely you should have a page on your website dedicated to that. That helps people to understand the kind of work you do. It also helps search engines understand the work you do, which is really important. Those pages are really good targets to help search engines understand the context of your business so that when someone does a search in your area and they say, I'm interested in recurring lawn care services, you can have a page dedicated to getting Google's attention for that specific key phrase. Uh, again, it helps people and websites and, and, and search engines to understand you better and it helps showcase your work. It helps really prove and show off the kind of stuff that you can do. The same goes for any major cities that you service in your area. Some folks get a little standoffish and they think, well, do I have to list every neighborhood, every city that I work in? Ideally, over time, you would, you may want to do every city that you that you could possibly visit. But start small, start with you know, the core 10. What are the 10 cities around you? The places where if someone called, you'd say, absolutely, no doubt, I will come out and I will service you. You should create pages that are focused on basically that city and lawn care or whatever or your your core focus is landscaping. Uh, those are, again, good targets for people and good targets for search engines to understand the context of the service you offer so that both search engines and people don't hesitate to recommend you or to see you as the expert they need. That's good. Next up, I want to pick your brain here, Chris, on the, the reviews. Um, in my specific um, situation, I used to have a lawn business in Atlanta and tried to drive reviews for that. I recently moved to Florida and I'm focusing more on serving my audience now and, you know, hel helping lawn care business owners and, and, and business owners in general prosper with a purpose. Um, but I still need to get reviews on my podcast and on uh, Apple podcasts and on Spotify. So, so whether you're trying to get reviews for a podcast or you're trying to get reviews for a fertilizer business or a lawn business or a landscaping business. I mean, that is so important to, to build that credibility online that we are rock stars, that we you know, serve our customers well or in podcast land that we serve. If you're listening to this podcast, hopefully you feel like you're getting value. W what is your tips to actually get real five-star reviews, whether it's on Google reviews or in my case, uh, Apple podcast reviews is kind of what I'm focusing on now. Uh, what is the best way to to do that? I think the number one thing that people are, you know, from a content creation standpoint for podcasts and for videos, and also from a, a contractor standpoint for lawn care companies, people are sometimes afraid to just come out there and ask. I think asking for the review, no matter what the context, uh, I think that's the easiest way to really engage people. When you can look someone in the eye digitally or in person and say, we could really, we could use your help if you could help us out by leaving us a review. We, you know, we're a small business. We want to grow or we've got a great message and we want to share it with more people or we've got great cheeseburgers and we want more people to eat our cheeseburgers. No matter what, making that ask and having a sincere conversation, even if it's one way through content delivery, uh, that's key. Most people don't realize the power that they have there. And if anyone has been positively impacted by the work you do or the product that you deliver, or the service that you render, if they're really happy with you, they will have no problem taking the time to leave you that review. They just need to be kind of spoon fed how to do that. So, you know, for podcasts or for videos, if it's for Apple Podcasts, you would say, hey, if you're listening to us, we'd really appreciate you leaving us a review on Apple or on Spotify or wherever you hear us. Uh, it really helps us to grow our reach. Uh, that really helps people make those asks in YouTube videos all the time. Like, comment, and subscribe. You hear that kind of language a lot. And they say it because it works, because people actually do those things once they're asked to do it. Same thing with contractors and lawn care providers. 
when you're out there on the job and you make the ask, you say, Are, uh, have you been satisfied by our services today? And they're going to say yes, or they're going to say no, and you fix it. Uh, and then they ultimately say yes, that they're happy. At that point, you just make that ask. You say, hey, then could you help us out and leave me a review? And you make it easy for them whenever possible, online or in person. You can give them links to the easiest places to leave you those reviews. Again, it's, it's kind of like spoon feeding that information to them. You want to make sure it's in their brain that they know that reviewing would help you. And then you want to give them the tools to make that easily happen. So for contractors, that's a review management system where you get set text messages and emails sent out to your customers to get them to leave your reviews. Uh, Footbridge uses BirdEye as an example. That's the service that we use to try to get more reviews. Uh, for YouTube and for podcasts, dropping links in the show notes to make it easy for someone to leave a review. That's the easiest way to get it. Again, spoon feeding that information, making it where you're reducing the hurdles as much as you can and getting that review. I appreciate you sharing that, Chris. And I, I think as you gave the answer, it convicted me about the asking part. I, I've just been shy and I've been timid and people are busy. You know, folks are running their business. A lot of guys that listen to me, um, you know, have marriages and children in addition to all their employees and uh, business. And so the last thing they're thinking about is, oh, Paul's podcast was great today. Let me go leave him a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. It, but you got to ask. And I listened to uh, the Dave Ramsey show about getting out of debt pretty consistently. And every single show, Chris, uh, without fail, every single show he asks. And I actually memorized his little spiel because he's like, our only marketing team is you. And, you know, leave us a five-star review. And he, and he, he but, it, but they have it. They must have like a script for their show because he does it 100% of the show. If you listen to the Ramsey show, they're going to ask you to go leave a five-star rating and review. And so I've realized I just got to get over that timidity. Um, even if I don't do it every show like Dave does, if I got to just start doing it more because I haven't been doing it in a while. And honestly, I feel like I'm thankful we don't really get that many bad reviews, but I feel like the only time people do leave a review is when they're irate about something. And they'll 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 take the proactive approach if they you know, have cold pizza or lukewarm coffee or whatever that upsets them. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's kind of, unfortunately, the human nature part of reviews that, that content creators and contractors have to fight against. People are definitely much more likely to leave you a bad review. Like you said, they're motivated by being angry. That's a much bigger motivator than being content with the service or enjoying a service. You know, you, if you uh, got your coffee and it was hot, like you wanted it and you drank it and it was the right uh, level of sweetness, you wouldn't say, wow, what, a, what an expert job they did. They go, yeah, I got my coffee. Uh, you'd just be happy about it. But if they said at the end, hey, if you could help us out, you know, you're walking down the street with your coffee, take out your other, your phone in your other hand. If you could leave us a five-star review, it helps us out. We'd appreciate it. You go, you know what? I see that barista, you know, once every couple of days and they're very nice to me. So yeah, you know, I will give uh, Jane and the coffee shop a review. Uh, just that little ask turns and everyday contentedness with a product and makes you realize, you know what? I am thankful for this product, or I am thankful for that person who's delivering that message or delivering me my coffee. Uh, just that simple ask. And like you said, a lot of folks, and I get it, I, I started off the same way. You're kind of afraid to make those asks. But what I found over the years in working with contractors and, and, uh, and with small business owners, most of the time, people are just really happy to help you out. If you are a small business owner and you've made a, a customer happy, they're happy to help you back. And if all it takes for them is a, a little review and, and 30 seconds on Google uh, and, and being given the, the easy methods to make that happen, they're more than happy to do that for you. It's not like they're, uh, a lot of contractors just feel like they're asking like they're owed something. Uh, but really it's such a small ask and people are so happy to do it when they're satisfied with, with what they've received. Yeah, I recently moved down to your state here in Florida, but when I lived up in Atlanta, I had an amazing barber, uh, Sean. He was he could get my beard right and my hair and and, and he's he's kind of he's always on the phone and he's talking to someone else you're like is he even paying attention and then you you get out of the chair and you feel like superman he's just smooth operator um i think he's from iran or, or somewhere in the middle east he's got this thick accent but he just fr from a skill set he 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 delivered every time on a really good hot shave and haircut and experience and, and the whole nine and uh when he would get done uh, he would say, Hey, Paul, Paulie, get me a review. Can you leave me a review? And, uh, for a few times, I always had an excuse. I was like, and he did a good job. I was just busy. You know, I was like, yeah, I'll get you. I'll get you. And then and he's like, I didn't see a review yet. And he would, he would, uh, ride my back about it. And then finally one day I was like, I got you. I got you. I'll do it right now. And I, I gave him a, 
a five star review and in the um county they have like rewards or or awards or whatnot and he would win best barber of the year every year because they did it based off your reviews and stuff like that uh, but he i don't want to use the word pester but he was very 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 persistent asking me to leave him that that online review and eventually i did and he well deserved it i mean he did great great work it wasn't like he did average work and was asking me for a five-star review he knocked it out of the park but <clears throat> i was just thinking about sean and how you know eventually i just gave him the review because he kept asking me yeah you, you've got to be dogged about it you know when it comes to, to online reviews a lot of times folks i mean you could tell that you know, that your guy knew his stuff because he knew if he got those reviews he would get that award ultimately and he would get more customers for it you know when you're a contractor when you're making content you have to realize that that's exactly what those reviews are going to do for you those reviews get you those social votes of confidence from total strangers and people will accept that uh, and as gospel truth and they will take that and they will then take a look at you for that reason you know, a lot of people a lot of contractors spend a lot of time chasing the sale they want to make sure they're working hard to impress someone with their estimate or with their bid uh, reaching out and doing follow-up to the sale very rarely do you see that same effort being put into reviews but really after that sale is done yes you can absolutely get them as a repeat customer yes you could talk about referral programs but that sale singularly is done if you can get a review from that same customer, that review will be online in perpetuity, as long as they've got that Google account or, or Facebook account or whatever account. That review will be there as a record of that company, of that customer, as a vote of confidence for you. And that will influence future people in making a decision about you. It's a very cyclical thing. If you can get 10 customers to leave your review, that gets you more customers. Those more customers give you more opportunities for review. And that's why you see lawn care companies that ultimately have hundreds and I've seen some with thousands of, of reviews online. And again, it's that aggregate impact. It's that you're making that ask on a consistent basis to grow your business. And those folks, those are the folks that realize my online reviews can help to take my business to the next level, not just in helping to influence people to trust me, but also influencing search engines or influencing, you know, how Apple podcast generates their featured, uh, their featured podcasts those votes of confidence can really help to, to be a boon to raise up your content or your business in your community. Very well said. Well, Chris, I want to uh, switch gears a little bit. I think you hit a grand slam there on, on uh, how, to, how to get good reviews online. But uh, next, I want to talk about if somebody's ready to get a website, how easy you guys make it and what that onboarding process is and what it's like to have Footbridge Media make your website world class. Like just walk us through someone's out there and they're like, you know what? Uh, I need to get on top of getting better online presence. I need to get a better website. You know, I've heard Paul and Jason Creole and Aaron Parker and all, all these guys talking about uh, Footbridge Media. Um, what's it like reaching out to you to actually getting the, the website live and uh, launched yeah we try to make the process overall as as easy as possible we know the contractors are busy there'll be some times where we really need you to help out but as much as possible we try to make it uh, we try to shoulder as much of the burden as possible so when you first get signed up we send out an information packet to you basically just a quick snapshot of who you are what you do the services you offer the cities you want to target again so we can kind of put the structure together for your website design uh, you'll be introduced to our onboarding manager They'll then reach out to you. They'll they'll talk to you about the information packet, and we deliver a design sample, a design proof of what your website is going to look like. Usually, that happens within just a few business days of you giving us that information that we need. Once you get the design proof over to you, we take some time to review it. We make adjustments and tweaks as you see fit. And once you approve that design, then we continue with the rest of the content development and creation. So, on the Footbridge Media side of things, we write all the content for you. Of course, if you have input, if you want things you want to include in your About Us page, or specific things about your processes of how you work, vendors that you use, specific equipment or product that you use that you want featured, we'll absolutely include that. But for the most part, we do all that heavy lifting. We write the content for our contractors. Uh, we prepare the, the websites in an optimized manner, and we build that site out from your design approval to your site launch. Usually just takes a, a couple of weeks, usually three to four weeks, depending on the site size and all that. Uh, and in that time, you're also introduced to our marketing consultants team. Our citations folks work with you. Those are the folks who help your Google business profile, uh, whether it's claiming it or uh, making sure we've got access to it to optimize it. Ultimately, that means your website launches 
with all this fresh content, your Google business profile is up and optimized. And then you start to work with our review management system and with our marketing consultants. Once you get to the marketing consultants, that's, I think, the best part because they are your go-to contact, not just for websites, but really anything marketing and business development. They can help point you in the right direction, whether it's an additional service that we offer at Footbridge Media or whether we make an outside recommendation for things you can do that cost you no money. They can help you to build your business to help you to gain more exposure. In a nutshell, that's it. We, we take you from zero to 60. We make sure we take care of your content design, your website design, writing, site building all in an optimized way, all in a way that as much as possible, we remove that burden from you. Uh, and then you get to launch live and then we get to work together on that continued collaboration to continue to build the site, to continue to build your online marketing presence. Love it. And in the show notes, uh, there is the link for a discount uh, to Footbridge Media uh, as a Listener, the Green Industry Podcast will hook you up there. So just click on that link in the the description. Uh, real quickly, Chris, I want to bring up, you guys made Jason Creole's website for Alabama Lawn Pros. I want to share it with you and just kind of have you um, walk me through, uh, you know, what, what something looks like when, um, oh, one second here. There we go. Can you see my, can you see Jason's website or yep. no? Yep, I can see it there. Okay, one second. Let me get you. Uh, let's do this right here. Let me know. Can you can you see it now? Yep. Okay. Yep, I can see there. So, and you guys listening on audio, I apologize, uh, but you can go over to YouTube and check out Green Industry Podcast. There, you've asked for me to make the audio available on video, and so we're doing that. So. Um, this is the homepage. I, I, I'm not an expert at all this stuff. I just know I see the call to action real clear in the upper right hand corner. Get a free estimate. Um, I see a picture of Jason. So, you know, OK, it's a good old Alabama boy who, who, who runs this company. I see, you know, the services that they offer. I see more call to actions. I mean, this looks like a really good homepage. Um, walk me through what you're seeing here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we like you said, the call to actions are really big one there. Some folks they just want to load a website and they want to see that something really exists there. It's usually a little stamp of approval that you're indeed a, a company <laughs> uh, and that you exist. But yeah, after that, we want to make sure we're featuring things that make you realize that you've landed to the right spot in the right spot. So we're talking about the services that we offer. We're we've got a clean, crisp design. It looks like a fresh website. You can see the map, so you can see yes, they actually work in my community. I, I can see that that's, you know, my, my neighborhood is within the view of this map. So I know that I'm there or even maybe my city is listed in those those cities there. And then as far as the applications for lawn care, we can see these are the steps that I can have taken on my property. I can get some questions answered. I can get some fresh information. Uh, if I want to click around, if really I'm just kind of interested and in maybe maybe I came here and I landed here because I'm trying to figure out how to do it myself. I can get some blog tips. Uh, that show me, yeah, you could maybe DIY it, but ultimately it shows it's difficult and maybe a professional would be a, an easier way for you to take care of this. So yeah, the, the goal with that website, with that homepage is to remind, is to reassure people that they've come to the right place. And when they are reassured and they want to take that next step, that they have an easy way to do that with those calls to action, with those click to call or click to schedule buttons. Yeah, and it's very, very simple. I mean, I, I kind of know inside how Jason runs his business because he's just a solo guy. But looking at this website, you would think they're this big company. You know what I mean? Yep, that's the goal. I mean, a, a lot of folks, uh, they are, they're afraid sometimes that their website might like make them too big. We've actually had folks who have requested us to take services down because they're getting you know, too, too many calls, um, which is a great problem to have when you're a contractor. But yeah, the goal is to make it so that it, it's a the website's a good encapsulization. It's like a little salesperson for you. And it educates someone, you know, if someone were to call you, they could, this website should answer every question they can ask you. What do you do? How can you help me? What's the best way for me to get started? Do you help me in my area? Uh, and making those, those web forms easy to use, having pictures of your work, having those city and service details, all that's key in, again, reassuring a customer that they've made it to the right spot. Sometimes customers don't want to call in. They want to click around for a while first before they make that commitment of having a, a human conversation. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. It's, you want a little bit of everything like that on your website. Yeah, well, you you guys did a really good job. And again, I know Jason, guys. He's just a good old Alabama boy from the backwoods, Alabama there. And this website makes you think they're this big Alabama lawn pros or this big company in Alabama. And 
you know, um, Nick Saban's probably going to get out of the truck and spray your yard. At, <laughs> you know? uh, but also, I like the the phone number right there. You you call that. I'm not going to read out the number, but you call that number, and and, and Jason's going to pick up. I, I I hang out with Jason. He answers the phone. He, Alabama <laughs> Lawn Bros. And and uh, again, I'm not saying you have to be solo and proud like Jason. Even if you run a bigger company, um, this this is how you know this is what you can expect if if Footbridge Media. Uh, creates a website you just feed them you know your picture like jason's got i love this chris is that you got pictures of jason right here mm -hmm. a lot of these websites i look at it's too much stock footage and and here i mean that's jason right there in his uh, i know his house that's he's actually in his driveway in that picture um and it's very clear he serves trustville gardenville kimberly um morris alabama and uh this is just very very clean organized so if you guys want a website that looks like this um all you have to do is click on that link in today's show notes and get connected with sam and the onboarding team there and uh get you a website made so so really good job your your team does does great work and um i was actually griping to jason a few years back about you know my audience i want to serve my audience if you listen to the green industry podcast i want to share with you hey here's the best crm here's the best trade shows to go to in the events here's the best banks to bank with here's the best bookkeepers who ironically i found there in pensacola florida the, the landscaping bookkeeper where you guys are based out of but i was complaining to jason i was like i can't find a good website company like i've recommended a few and they've I, you know, my listeners would call me back and be like, hey, I didn't do a good job, Paul. And I was like, oh, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like, let me keep searching here. And I was talking to Jason. We're out playing golf. And he's like, I found them, Paul. He's like, they're down in Florida. Footbridge Media. You got to you gotta check them out. So I was so wounded from these other experiences. I literally got in my truck and drove down. <laughs> and um, I was like, I want to investigate. Make sure you guys are going to take care of my audience. And, and I met Bailey and Sam and some of the other team there. And um, you guys are taking care of several of our listeners. I think you've built, uh, you know better than I do, but a lot of websites for, for my listeners. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're very, like you said, there's unfortunately a lot of a lot of uh, bad players out there when it comes to marketing. A lot of folks who unfortunately don't necessarily walk the walk and talk the talk. We've been very lucky that at Footbridge, we actually this year celebrated 20 years of helping contractors specifically. The contractor focus has always been there. Um, so we're very lucky in that we help lots of different landscape 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 folks across the country uh and we've been able to build a good rapport you know it's kind of one of the reasons what we do what we do why we do what we do is because we have a good understanding of how this industry works how home services work how lawn care works uh so for a lot of contractors it makes that transition easy sometimes if you work with another agency there's a lot of education that's to go on a lot of research we already know about pre-emergent herbicides and we already know uh, we joke that we, we know way too much about the trades for not being tradespeople ourselves mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's really it's been fun to focus on these niches on the trades and on contractors and home service providers and lawn care folks because we really get a good feeling and understanding for how our contractors work but also means that we know how our contractors customers work and what makes them tick uh, so I think it makes it where we can really have the streamlined process where you go through the out onboarding you go through this build process. And we already have a good baseline understanding of exactly what needs to happen before the lead even comes in for you, before the phone calls even come in for you. We have a good understanding of how you want to operate and how you want to attract customers. Uh, and that's kind of always been a core of what we do. We've been, our goal at Full Version Media is to make your business more successful so that you don't necessarily have to rely on just buying leads or having just one avenue. It's really kind of helping you develop your own plan your own pathway to open up your business to more success online. Absolutely love it, Chris. Well, again, I know a lot of you guys are listening on Apple and Spotify and you didn't just see the website I showed, but um, if you want to go over to YouTube, um, eventually uh, we're going to get this video edited and put up there and uh, you can you can see it, but just click on that link in the show notes and uh, contact the onboarding team at Footbridge and just say, Paul, Paul Jameson sent me, take, take good care of me and let's let's get rocking and rolling get me a website like jason creole and uh, they'll take care of that for you is there anything else uh, we're leaving out here chris that that you want to address i think at the end of the day people have to remember that marketing is not a set it forget it kind of thing it's not something you do passively once and that you're done you really need to find the right recipe you need to find the right methods find out what works for you as a business 
Uh, a lot of times that is, uh, you know, how, how folks find other contractors, how homeowners find contractors is through those recommendations. It's through reading those reviews and finding out who can really help you out. Uh, and I'm really hopeful that you'll find that Footbridge is, is one of those folks that can do it. You know, ultimately at the end of the day, we're not successful unless you are. And that's, I think, why we've operated the way we have for the past 20 years is our goal is to help contractors and, and we look forward to helping you.